a production of the New Jersey Courts. This begins an oral history interview with retired New Jersey Supreme Court Justice John E. Wallace, Jr. on April 18th, 2018 in Woodbury, New Jersey with Sean Illingworth of the Rector's Oral History Archive for the New Jersey Supreme Court Oral History Program. And uh, Justice Wallace, thank you so much for sitting down with me today. Good morning, Sean. My pleasure. Do you mind if I just call you Sean? Oh, yeah, please. Very good. All right. Um, to begin, can you tell me where and when you were born? Yes, I was born March 13th, 1942 in Pittman, New Jersey. Uh, I was told that I was born in my actual home at 446 Miro Avenue, that uh, I was one of four uh, children in the family. I have three older sisters, and uh, I think whether for good luck or not, my mother uh, wanted to have me at home, hoping that would be a boy since uh, they had uh, sought a boy at uh, one of the uh, four children that they had. So you're the youngest of the family? I'm the youngest in the family of four children, correct. Uh, tell, tell me uh, your parents' names for the record. Yes, my uh, father was uh, Johnny Wallace Sr. Uh, my uh, mother was Evelyn C. Weeks uh, Wallace. Uh, my mother was from, uh, her family was from, from Barbados, and my father's family was from the northern part of Florida. Now, do you know how they came to settle in New Jersey? Uh, well, my father's uh, family moved when he was seven years old uh, from uh, Florida to Glassboro. And my mother's family uh, had uh, been living in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Uh, when my mother uh, went on to uh, Glassboro Normal School, I guess she was 17 uh, about the time, uh, the Glassboro Normal School was, of course, in Glassboro, New Jersey. And my father lived there, and one of the social events was uh, some of the young men in the area would socialize with the uh, uh, African-American women going to the um, Glassboro Normal School. And that's how my parents met uh, many years ago. So um, your, mo your mother, uh, she wasn't born in Barbados, was no, she? No, she was born in Atlantic City, but okay. my uh, mother's parents were both born in Barbados. Now, um, what was your father doing at that time? Why, why was he in the Glassboro area? Well, my father uh, lived in Glassboro uh, since uh, he was age uh, seven, seven to yeah, age seven. Uh, so he was a, a resident of Glassboro. My uh, uh, parents' family lived uh, actually on, on property that is now owned by Rowan University and uh, on Carpenter Street. Uh, so he grew up there and lived there and uh, was in the area when they had uh, social activities with the uh, students at uh, the Glassboro School. And um, did your mother uh, wind up becoming a teacher? No, she did not. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, after meeting my father, shortly thereafter, they, uh, they married uh, and uh, started a family. Uh, my father was, uh, had been to uh, Bordentown Manual Training School in uh, Bordentown, New Jersey. Uh, he had left, let me back up a little bit, uh, he left school, uh, I guess, in the eighth grade uh, to work. Uh, it was a tough time for his family and uh, did all sorts of, uh, of jobs. Uh, after being out of school for several years, uh, he was able to attend the uh, Bordentown uh, Manual Training School and uh, learn uh, various trades. Uh, when he came out, he did a number of jobs, uh, always willing to uh, do what it would take to uh, uh, be successful and have uh, money on the table. Uh, learned how to press uh, in a dry cleaning facility. Was a very outgoing individual and uh, uh, got along well with people. Mm -hmm. uh, did your mother work outside of the home? Uh, she did. Uh, at some point, uh, she worked at uh, Owens, Illinois, which was a, uh, a major uh, manufacturing facility in Glassboro, New Jersey. She worked there for a number of years, and then uh, all the way when my father, uh, who had uh, been a, a uh, presser uh, and spotter for a uh, local uh, dry cleaning facility in Pittman, New Jersey, uh, he at some point had a disagreement with the owner, who they were good friends, but uh, my father was pretty strong-willed, and uh, uh, the disagreement was such that uh, he felt he could no longer continue working there. 
So he, uh, uh, he resigned. Uh, a short while later, the uh, owner of the dry cleaner um, realized that he really he couldn't continue without my father, who was essentially operating the business. So he sold the business to my father, and my father became a, uh, a business uh, owner of a dry cleaning facility in Pittman, New Jersey, uh, back in the early 50s. What was the name of the business? It was Pittman Cleaners, uh, as named uh, by my father. Before that, it was Hegerman Cleaners. So uh, tell me about your earliest memories of growing up in Pittman. Well, I guess my earliest memories was I was always outside uh, playing, doing something uh, of a, a kid's activity. Uh, we lived uh, close to our athletic fields for the high school. So I would uh, always be down there. Uh, uh, we had uh, little league uh, facilities when I was uh, coming up. Uh, and I recall going out for Little League at age nine. Uh, I was a fairly good athlete, so uh, I made the team. Uh, one of the things I do remember as uh, my first Little League game, uh, I did not start the game, but in the latter innings, I was uh, put in right field, which traditionally seems to be where uh, the younger players uh, go. And uh, fly ball was hit to me. Uh, I had, in fact, borrowed someone else's glove because even though I was a short, really infielder, I had uh, been able to acquire a first baseman's glove. So you can't use a first baseman's glove in the outfield. So I, I borrowed uh, a friend's glove. Uh, in any event, the ball was hit to me in right field and I ran over and made the catch. And uh, uh, that was the, the beginning of a successful Little League career because thereafter I started. Uh, in fact, when I came up the bat later on in the game, I uh, laid down a butt and beat it out. So things started well for me. So um, uh, what was the neighborhood like? Was it, uh, you know, like, would you describe it as working class? Uh, was there a particular ethnicity or group that uh, dominated? Yes. Uh, Pittman had uh, very few African-American families in the town. Uh, we had, uh, as I recall, there were uh, two of them on my street, uh, my, actually three, and they were all brothers. My father uh, lived in the last house on the left-hand side of Muriel Avenue. And I had an uncle who lived directly across the street, and then another uncle who lived uh, midway uh, in the block. Uh, and that was, uh, at that time, uh, I guess there was another uh, family at the very start, beginning of the street, and uh, there were four African-American families living on this, this block it, it went, that I can recall. Mm -hmm. It was not always African-American, but uh, uh, by my memory, uh, by the time I started growing up, uh, there were uh, four African-American families living on the street. Um, now, you know, organized sports would play a part in your life, but what about like um, pickup games and stuff like that? Was that a regular part of your life? Oh, it was a regular part of my life. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, my older sisters would go to camp each summer, but I would not go to camp because of playing uh, uh, both organized and uh, just pickup. Uh, as you go through school, uh, uh, during various periods of your life after school, you get together and you uh, play a touch football or uh, uh, even light tackle. Uh, during baseball season, it would be baseball, and basketball season would be basketball. So uh, I was always outside doing something. Uh, uh, but around 5 o'clock, you always had to make your way back to home so that uh, uh, you were there in time for dinner. Um, you know, in your household with one side coming from Barbados, the other from the South. Were there any traditions kept up, whether in cooking or lifestyle? Uh, not that I knew of. Uh, everything was just normal to me. Uh, came home, uh, mom and dad, uh, we, all, we normally would have dinner together. Uh, but my father was a very industrious individual. After he had acquired the uh, uh, dry cleaning establishment, he uh, then had an opportunity to uh, become a partner in a, uh, a taproom facility in Glassboro, the next town over. Uh, and he did that for several years uh, with a partner and then uh, ultimately bought that partner out and rebuilt the, uh, another uh, establishment nearby. You said it was a tack room? Tap room, I'm sorry. Tap room, oh, okay, bar, sorry. <laughs> uh, a local bar tap room uh, mm -hmm. facility in Glassboro, New Jersey. Did that service the, uh, the college area or more of a local? No, it was more of a local area in the, uh, 
what they call the lawn section of Glassboro. And it was, I think, the only African-American facility, bar, entertainment type there in Glassboro at the time. I'm curious, this is jumping ahead a little bit, but you know, with your father owning these businesses, did he enlist you to come help out? Uh, well, uh, all the uh, family members participated in the dry cleaning facility. Uh, we would, uh, my sisters would wait on the counter for customers coming in uh, in the summertime and after school on, on some occasions. I generally, uh, I guess I was in the eighth grade before I started, uh, I learned how to uh, uh, do everything in the cleaning plant from putting the clothes in the uh, uh, solvent cleaner to uh, spotting uh, the clothes and then actually pressing the clothes. So I learned a lot uh, over the years uh, when I became uh, 17 years old and able to drive. Uh, my father was one of the, uh, his cleaning plant was one of the few that had uh, pickup and delivery. So they had uh, two or three trucks. Uh, when a, a driver would go on vacation during the summer, I would pick up and take that driver's route and uh, make pickup and delivery. Uh, that was a little easier because you're outside of a very hot cleaning plant otherwise uh, if you're working inside. So tell me uh, what schools you went to growing up in Pittman. Uh, I started out with uh, Summit Avenue School. Uh, it was a school that you went from kindergarten through eighth grade. Uh, it, uh, it no longer exists. Uh, they cleared it out about uh, gee, 30 years ago. They just uh, uh, tore down the building. But it was a, a very interesting school. I was uh, the only African American in my class uh, from kindergarten through high school. Uh, but it, it was just, uh, I, I didn't recognize that, didn't realize that. I was just a, one of the kids in the class, and I always uh, did well from my, from my academic standpoint. I was fairly athletic, uh, uh, got along well with my classmates, and uh, did various activities with them after school. So there wasn't any isolation? No, none at all, yeah. none at all. I was a leader in the class when we first started having elections for class president, uh, I would uh, generally be elected the president, uh, so things went well. You described uh, your father's tap room as uh, an African-American tap room, like, so I yes. assume like a hangout. Was there that kind of separation in the area? Um, were there areas, to put it another way, places you wouldn't feel comfortable going? Uh, I personally did not feel that way. I'm sure others may have, and uh, this was a, uh, a primarily uh, uh, black uh, bar. Uh, everyone was welcome, but it was pretty much known that it was an African-American uh, establishment that a lot of African-Americans would attend and uh, have good times. So growing up, uh, were there other uh, activities or institutions that were a part of your life, like uh, church or Boy Scouts? Yes, uh, in fact, both of them. Uh, as a uh, youngster, I, I attended uh, the First Baptist Church in Glassboro, New Jersey. Uh, my grandmother was very active in, in that church. Uh, both my parents were Episcopalian, but my uncle who lived across the street was Baptist, and he uh, regularly attended uh, church. So I would generally go to, to church with, with him, uh, and uh, it was a, a very pleasant experience uh, growing up in the uh, in the Baptist Church. Uh, they had a lot of uh, activities for, uh, for youngsters. Uh, you had a Christmas uh, recital, uh, Easter recital, where you would uh, have to say a little piece or as uh, part of your uh, uh, Sunday school program. Uh, and it was, it was a good atmosphere. Uh, I got to see and meet uh, African Americans, whereas in Pittman, where I grew up, there were very few, so I did not interact with them uh, the way I did with uh, others on Sunday morning when I would go to Glassboro. Um, was the church uh, like a place where you would go to see speakers as well? Do you remember anybody coming through? Uh, no, I do not recall that. Okay. Uh, it was You'd have the minister uh, who delivered the ceremony uh, and you'd go to church. Sunday school was like 10 to 11.30 and then church would start after that. So you. I would leave early and come home sometime after one. So uh, you mentioned Boy Scouts as well. Oh yes, but, uh, uh, I was a uh, first a Cub Scout. Uh, 
and then graduated on to uh, Boy Scouts, uh, another uh, rewarding experience. Uh, but I, I had my first uh, sort of exposure to discrimination as a Boy Scout. Uh, our, our club uh, had uh, decided to do an overnight at uh, Obers Lake in Glassboro, the next town over. And uh, uh, we went, and uh, when I got there, they said that I could not stay because I was black. Uh, that was my first exposure, and that left a little bitter taste in my mouth for Boy Scouts since it, the two were related somewhat. Uh, I would have thought they would not have gone to a place that I could not attend, but uh, they, uh, and maybe they did not know, because I'm a kid, so I'm not uh, aware of all the things that were going on. Uh, so uh, that was my first exposure to discrimination, uh, and I, I guess I was in eighth grade at the time. Now, um, what subjects interested you the most in school? I liked English a lot, history. Uh, they were the two, uh, Spanish and Latin I enjoyed. I was not uh, big on science, although I did okay in, in the courses, but uh, for some reason it, I just didn't take to it. Do any of your teachers stand out as mentors uh, or influential? Well, uh, I had a lot of good uh, influential teachers, and uh, especially my English teacher in high school, uh, uh, she made it clear it was very important to uh, uh, understand and learn the English language as well as the literature part portion of it. Uh, she was wonderful. My history teacher uh, was also my football coach, so I, I looked up to him a lot. Uh, a number of grade schools. I guess my first male teacher was, uh, I did not have until sixth grade. Mm. Uh, and uh, Charles Wolf was his name, and he was an outstanding teacher, and I, I enjoyed having a male teacher for a change. So um, playing for uh, school, did they have that uh, in junior high or grade school, or did that only start in high school? Uh, the only program we had in junior high was seventh and eighth grade basketball. And that was my first exposure to organized uh, baseball. I should uh, take that back. They also had uh, Army and Navy football. Uh, it was, uh, I guess, like the midget football programs today. Uh, but in Pittman, I think we only played two or three games a year. One of them would be uh, on Mischief Night and uh, some other time during the season. So you only played two or three games. And it was called Army Navy. One group was called Army, the other group was called Navy. Uh, you practiced on the same field, uh, but you had different coaches. And then you would play your game, the few games. We were one of the few towns that had lights uh, at our football stadium, the high school football stadium. So it was a big thrill for us to, uh, us seventh and eighth graders to go to the uh, stadium and uh, have a game uh, on those nights that we played. And when you got into high school, uh, uh, was football your major sport, or were you well, equally devoted to all, all I was, the sports? I was equally devoted to football, uh, basketball, and baseball. Um, a short story on the football side, as an eighth grader, my uh, uh, the football coach, who happened to be the guidance counselor at the high school, uh, suggested I play quarterback. So I started playing quarterback, was pretty successful. Uh, so I continue on that when I went into high school. But high school was uh, football season started the first part of the year. Uh, then the midterm was basketball and uh, then uh, baseball. I was fortunate enough that I was, uh, uh, I had enough sufficient abilities that I played uh, junior varsity in my freshman year. And then after that, I was playing varsity uh, throughout the balance of my high school career in those three sports. So, um, uh, obviously there's a lot of games, I don't want to... Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but, you know, did you have like a rival then? Uh, do any... A, a town? Yeah. Yes, uh, Glassboro, of course, was a rival. Mm -hmm. Jason Towns, and uh, we played them, uh, I just recall the football games. Uh, we were fortunate in that uh, during my tenure, we won the games. Clayton was also another rival that was the next town uh, beyond Glassboro and that would be our Thanksgiving game. And uh, we won two out of the three uh, during my, uh, my years as playing varsity. Unfortunately, the third one we lost was my senior year, and uh, uh, while we knocked Clayton out of the championship my junior year, 
they won the championship the senior year by uh, beating us. And were these, uh, you know, big, big uh, events for the town as well? Oh, yes. Uh, the thanks Thanksgiving game was always a big game. You had a great turnout, uh, whether it was pit, played in Pittman or played in Clayton. Uh, people came. Uh, it was a big deal uh, uh, for people. To, uh, it was an early morning game, too. It was the only 10 o'clock game we played for the year. And uh, it would be an exciting time. And uh, uh, I was not a hunter, but some of our players did hunt, and this is near the hunting season, so some would actually go out hunting before the game and then come in and be prepared to play the football game. Uh, I'm sure that wouldn't happen today, but uh, it did in my day. Mm. Um, I'm curious because I've talked to a lot of former uh, high school, college football players who credit it with uh, um, instilling a lot of lessons and that sort of thing. What do you, what do you think you took away from your uh, athletic career that helped you later on? Well, I'm sure there are a lot more things I uh, would take away that I will tell you, uh, only because I don't recall them all, because it was a, it was a great experience. Uh, you, you're taught discipline. Uh, you're taught how to play with other people. You're taught that uh, uh, you're not always going to be successful and that you have to regroup and then be prepared to play the next game and uh, uh, learn from your mistakes, uh, try to do a better job, and uh, uh, don't criticize your teammates, but encourage them, uh, all the things that motivate people to be better. Now, uh, what years were you in uh, Pittman High School? I attended Pittman High School from 1956 through 60. I graduated in 1960. Okay. Um, now, during this time that you were uh, being raised in uh, Pittman, um, were you aware of, of the larger world? Did you follow the news, uh, whether it was national or international news? Not to a great extent, but I was aware. I mean, my parents, uh, uh, we talked it within the family, and I was aware of uh, things that were going on uh, uh, outside uh, Pittman and outside of my life. Uh, I was aware of discrimination, uh, uh, the in, uh, injustices that were imposed upon other individuals. Uh, I was taught to always be respectful, uh, and I recognized that not everybody was, and not everybody treated uh, uh, people fairly and evenly, but that uh, to the extent that uh, if something were to, if I were to be stopped, that I would make sure that I was uh, respectful to the person who stopped me as a police officer or otherwise, and uh, to try to stay out of trouble to the extent that I could. What about um, the growing uh, civil rights movement? Was that discussed in your household? Or oh, yes. Talked we, uh, we talked about it. Uh, my mother, uh, I guess this was later on uh, when they had the March on Washington. She attended, it was, I think, near the August 31st or there about uh, in uh, uh, 1963. And I was uh, at football practice at the University of Delaware, so I, I couldn't, could not go. But uh, yes, I was, I was aware, uh, backtracking a little bit, uh, when I, uh, after graduating from uh, uh, Pittman, uh, I was offered a, uh, a grant and aid scholarship at University of Delaware, and I accepted that uh, and went on to, uh, to play uh, football there. Uh, that was my first exposure to uh, uh, actual segregation. Uh, the restaurants, some of them uh, did not, would not serve me. Uh, they discriminated and did not uh, permit African Americans to eat in certain establishments. Uh, the university was wonderful. They, there was nothing uh, on the university itself, but this is outside in the city of Newark. Uh, at that time, there was no uh, universal law that uh, prohibited such conduct, and it did, uh, it did happen, and uh, uh, there was that discrimination. Yeah, I wanted to ask um, uh, how you decided on uh, Udell and, you know, did you look at other schools? Okay, I, I did. I looked at uh, several other schools. Uh, uh, when, when you have three sisters, uh, and they all attended college, uh, and so tuition was a factor, and uh, I uh, was offered uh, some money from Bowling Green. Uh, I had applied to a couple other schools that I was admitted to and was all set to go to Bowling Green University, but uh, Delaware offered me more, more money near the 
end of uh, the summer or end of the, the uh, spring area uh, when summer is starting. And uh, as a consequence, I accepted that it was only an hour away, uh, close by. My parents could come see me participate in whatever activity uh, activities I was involved in. And it's, uh, it's a beautiful campus, so it seemed like a might make a good fit. Uh, I didn't know what the uh, uh, student body makeup would be from a racial standpoint, uh, but I was prepared uh, to uh, attend Delaware and see how it would work out. What were your uh, first few days and weeks on campus like, you know, adjusting to this new independence? And new well, you know, uh, college life is wonderful. You know, you get to know people from all over uh, the eastern uh, seaboard as Delaware was. Uh, and I was uh, in the Sharp dorm uh, where I was given a room. My room was also an African-American, uh, Mike Brown. In fact, we roomed uh, for four years at uh, Delaware. He was also a football player. Uh, but I got to know good people from, uh, as I said, white and black all over the state. Very few blacks, by the way, but uh, only because they were less than uh, 10, I would say, in the whole university when I, when I was there. Uh, and uh, it, was, uh, it was an exciting time only because I was doing something different, new, uh, learning. Uh, and one of my uh, first experiences, because shortly after I arrived, we started uh, football practice. Mm -hmm. At that time, uh, freshmen did not report earlier for, for football. Freshmen could not play varsity. Uh, you were limited in just playing freshman football. So the first day of practice, uh, I go out and you go through the drills. And uh, uh, when I'm leaving, uh, someone said, uh, hi, Johnny. And I turn around. It's a, a football player from Salem High School that I played three sports against. And uh, it was nice having a friend at the university that I could relate to and talk to about issues that you don't always know about. So that was uh, a great experience uh, to start with and everything just sort of uh, played out very well at the, at the university from a football standpoint. Mm. Uh, his name was Clint Ware. Clint unfortunately passed away uh, in his early 50s I think from uh, a Lou Gehrig's type disease. But he was a football coach at uh, Woodstown High School, one of the local schools uh, down here, and was an excellent individual. What was the um, uh, split in an average week during the season between practice and, and your obligations uh, to the team and then you know, your academics and other activities? Well, uh, I've always found that I did better, better academically during football season than I did other times because my time was really structured. Uh, you had uh, numerous classes, and I, I carried a load, I guess, of 18 credits. Uh, so you'd go to school to 3 o'clock or so, walk up to the gym, uh, change for football practice, have football practice for a couple of hours, shower, come back, have dinner, and then you you'd study from uh, 7 to 9 or 9.30. So I was pretty structured in what I did. And when I say study, you know, you don't always study. I'm in the library and uh, having friends, having fun with friends. But uh, I'm out of my room trying to prepare for what I think is necessary. And I, uh, I would do that on a consistent basis. I found that during basketball season when I did not have anything to do, uh, at that time, there were not weight training programs the way there are now. So you pretty much had uh, your time to yourself. However, at that time, you were able to work uh, as a student. And I, I worked throughout my uh, four-year uh, period in college. Uh, and when I say work, it's not a big deal. Uh, I think uh, as freshman football players, we parked cars for uh, the varsity games. Uh, after that, uh, when I was in, during basketball season, I worked in the, uh, in the stadium and uh, would either sell tickets or uh, be someone somewhere in the stadium as an attendant. Uh, so it wasn't hard work, but it was uh, work that uh, you, you earned a couple bucks an hour doing. Uh, you cannot do that. They've changed the rules since then, and uh, uh, 
uh, college athletes are no longer able to have jobs and be paid by the institution. Uh, so it was a busy time, it was a good time. Uh, uh, it was uh, socially, uh, I mean, I, I came from a background that uh, uh, when I was in, uh, going back to Pittman, uh, I was friendly with everybody, boys, girls. I danced with the ladies. I had uh, great friends with the, with the men. Uh, I was president of our student council my senior year. And one of the things we did, uh, I don't think it was because I was the president, but we had uh, we were responsible for buying records for our uh, uh, Friday night uh, dances. Mm -hmm. And we got so that uh, even at lunch hour, if it, we could find a teacher who was, uh, had the time, uh, kids would be able to dance in the gym uh, during our lunch period. So we did some things that I thought were creative and fun as a, at, at high school. So I was a, a pretty good dancer as a result of, uh, I think, having three sisters and uh, not wanting to be left out. So I always, always participated. Uh, and then when we went to college, uh, I did pretty much the same thing. I would, uh, at some of the dances, although it was, uh, it got to be lonely in that, as I said, there were a few African-American uh, ladies uh, and if I wanted to date someone I normally went off campus.